the power of liberations in God's word. In partnership with the Spirit, God is raising His servants and vociferous to raise glorious envoys in this day and age. Meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly unto them, that your profiting may appear to all. Sit, Sit back, back as, as the Holy, Holy Spirit gives you death of, of God's, God's word. word. for what he will do tonight. Bless him for what he's doing already. Lord, I give you my hands. I give you my soul. I live for you. I live for you. The first and the second rows in each seat. The first and the second rows. This is the way you will pardon me. I love the way you pardon me. If this is the way you will pardon me. I love the way you pardon me. Come on, declare the atmosphere. Declare the atmosphere open for the Holy Ghost to have his will. Declare it open. Control the territory. By praying in the Holy Ghost, control, control the territory. Lose those that are supposed to be into this service. Lose as many as sick, as many that are bound. Shikato perande zubrahada, ikata pande koto zisya, neke de gadomba shake ne konsa, irata kata balata lata, ilisozo kene kesh kene manda, eran de gede gadadon se gede gede. Begin to program agenda. Ile denze le bando. Susa, a carande, carande, caradi, irrede de cabeleba dos and Amanda, a yekete kete koto bala kapa, a grande de gedekete, ilo dos amane keletua, a yekete koto bara de susia, irata kata barata, a kla ande kete bota, bande kaluse le koske le ma, a barata kata 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 kata, irrede kete kete kete, irrede kata kata kata. Ratoto Samanaka, Irete de Goto, Mande Kreto, if there is a man to pray, Zene de 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 Goto, we lose spiritual connections, I dislocate them, Irata Kosa, I reverse, Ireke de Gedes, Ireke de Gedes, Ireke de Gedes, Mande Kete, Roto Pana, Eyano Nos, Ika Bande Korade, Keep praying. Keep praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hold some hands and as we pray. We're going to pray, Lord, who open my eyes spiritually. Let me see. Open my eyes spiritually. Let me see. In the realm of the spirit, there are also senses. Senses for touching, feeling, and doing many things. Until those senses are activated or open, you may not see anything. Open my what? My eyes. I read to pray. So, Lord, open my eyes. Open your mouth and pray. 
Lord, open my eyes spiritually. That as the word is coming forth, I am seeing what nobody is seeing. Daniel, the Bible says, Daniel understood by what? By what? By what? Yet, when the angel appeared, what did the angel say? What did the angel tell him? Gabriel. He said, I have come to give you the spirit of understanding. And the spirit of utterance. Am I communicating? Yet, this man said he understood by books. I come getting. It's not to come in and try to make it happen. It's different from when the spirit is supplied. The reason why I will call someone, I will say, come and preach on Tuesday, and the person will be preparing and preparing and be scared, is because the spirit is not yet available in that man's life. When it is available, it does not struggle. Am I come getting? Being eloquent is not the same as untrust. That you can talk fast or talk well. It's not the same as ultras. When you communicate deep things, it takes the spirit to be available. That even when you are not even when you are not prepared, it's not as though you know it so much, but the spirit is there. That's the same thing that happened in examination. There are people that are prepared that try to understand by books. There are people that even is just lit to there because of that spirit in them that makes them to understand how to answer questions. They will place that little they have and expand it. And later I would think this one even knows it better than this other one. While the other one lacks the ability to present it, the spirit is not yet supplied. So Lord, supply unto me the spirit of understanding. So no more, what do you want? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You are about to write your exam. You need that spirit. Now the Lord is that spirit. Whenever that spirit appears, there must be freedom from failure. There must be freedom. You communicate spiritual things easily. You communicate your academic work easily. Oh Lord, release unto me the spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding. As I write this exam, oh Gabriel, I have come, I am Gabriel, I have come to supply you with the spirit of understanding. The reason why people are not coming to serve it is because they don't have that spirit of understanding, so they are scared that if I don't do it now, pray the spirit of understanding, let it be supplied. Lord, you help us in Jesus' name. Have your seats celebrate close to you. Father, we declare the atmosphere open in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of us are happy to be God's house. Just quickly, we have limited time. I just want to talk about something important. Play on strings. Very shortly. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just bow your head and talk to God. The Lord speak to me tonight. It's not about what you want to hear. It's about what God wants you to hear. Hello. 
Barbadoso, Brahmasca, Namanda, Suza, Bradesi, Manoz e Rao. Father, give us a chance to learn it. We pray for that spirit of understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Many of us are happy to be here. When God brings you to a place like this, this is one thing God wants you to do. God wants you to be focused so that you can get what he has for you. When God brings you to a church like this, it's so that you can be focused to get the things he has for you. The problem I've seen with most Christians is that they are just zealous. The Bible records that they have a zeal. But there is something wrong with that zeal. That zeal is not according to knowledge. And so, all the fire they claim they are actually pursuing, you find out that if you are to leave these people for years, they will actually no, not catch any fire. And it is to this end that God made some apostles so that he can direct these people. When you begin to direct some persons, I have noticed that in Christianity, when we begin to direct people and tell them, don't do this, don't do this, they think you are trying to short circuit their manifestation. Not knowing that in life, if you arrive before your time, you will disappear. Am I communicating? If you arrive before your time, what happens? You will disappear. I was talking to some uh, lady and a guy the other day. I told them, I said, if you arrive before your time, you disappear. In that, that is not when you are be destined to shine. Um, so you must sit at that point where you are not destined to shine yet and learn. Hallelujah. Imagine you are shouting, God, give me money, possibly because you want to enter into the list of competitors for uh, the most richest persons. Not in this dispensation where we already have men like Dangote or Big Gates. You will be of no relevance. You know why? There are many people there and it is their time. And it's not yours yet. That does not mean you won't have a little in your hand. But when it's not your time and you try to do things that are meant for your time, it will not amount to anything. Nobody will appreciate it. Listen, in life, what gives you honor is when you are caught to the stage. What did I say? What gives you honor is when you are caught to the stage. If you are not caught to the stage, there is no honor. You will do things and people will not appreciate them. Jesus said when you are bidding for a feast, he says sit at the back. Don't carry yourself and come and sit in the high table. He said, let those who, who, who organize it call you from the back. He said, then you shall have honor. Hence, if you come to the state, they may ask you to go back when everybody is already present. Because it was never the time and your time. So when God brings you to a place like this, I found out that many people are really hungry. But the way they go about their hunger is wrong. When God brings you to a place like this, sit down and find what God has sent you to come and learn here. Amen. If God brings you to a level and you do not sit down to understand that level and you, that level or the time allocated for that level passes, you'll be surprised in life you will suffer for the same thing you skipped. Amen. You can skip things in exams and you'll be able to do them again. But in life when you skip a step, it can affect you for life. So it's one step at what? At a time. So a lot of people are actually hungry. They are very hungry for God. But their pursuit, their pattern in which they are going is a very wrong pattern. And yet they want to carry fire. And fire is such a thing that when you carry it, even you, the carrier, it does not respect you. If you are not able to control it, where it can burn you. So people come and say, come on, give us the fire. The fire is more like the roof of a house. If you are saying, give me the roof where the legs are not standing, what are you doing? You are endangering your life. I was talking to some person some days ago. Sorry, I'm talking about hunger for God. So you understand what we are talking about tonight. Hunger for God. The true way to really assess God. Hence, you will keep pursuing God the wrong way. And after 90 years, you find that you have not seen God. And it looks like the Bible is an epic or a storybook which works for some persons and does not work for some people. 
Am I communicating? There is a right pattern to go after hunger. If you go after hunger the wrong way, you miss ending up. And at the end of it, you will not last in your journey. So I told you, I said, fire is like the roofing of a building. A lot of people are just saying, give me the roof, give me the roof. It does not take anything for God to give a man the roof. But what we sustain that roof? Have you built the things that will sustain the roof? How many of us have seen a house they start from the roof? Have you seen? So it is when some persons are actually pursuing after God. They are, they are just after the roof. Why they are not interested in what makes the roof standing. There are things that hold fire. And if you don't work on those things, when the fire comes, it will burn you. And you not just be a disgrace to yourself. You'll be a disgrace to Christianity. Amen. Let's see the scriptures. Psalm 119 verse 105. It's calling us deeper. It's calling us deeper. Deeper. Yes, we are coming up higher. We're coming up higher. We are coming up higher. We are coming up higher. In Genesis, the Bible talks about a man called Cain. Cain. What the Bible says about Cain? The Bible says he left the presence of God and he went to build his own city. He left the dealings of God and went to establish his own city. Because God wanted to deal with him on account of the things he was not doing right. First, this is not a time to follow God any longer. And he went to build his own city, which was a city against God. So whenever a man neglects the dealings of God, he's building a city. And that city is against God's will. Amen. Are we there? Psalms 119. Are you there? Read. Thy word have I hid in my heart. I might not sin against thee. That's a word. Okay, can we have uh, Hebrews 5 14? Let me go back again. Hebrews 5 verse 14. Hebrews 5 verse 14. It's calling us deeper. It's calling. Yes. Amen. The place I ask you to read is Psalm one one nine verse one five. That your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my paths. Amen. And the other place you read from Hebrews 5 verse 14 says that what? Strong meat they are for men who are of age. Who by reason of discernment can what? Can navigate between what is good and evil. Amen. So I said tonight I'm talking about what? A hunger for God. How to truly pursue your hunger for God. Hallelujah. As you join in your Christian race, definitely... Things will begin to happen. Whether you are doing it right or wrong, things will begin to happen. Those things, they are to encourage you so that you can press harder. Am I communicating? But you must check what you are doing if it's truly the right way. Every way man takes, there is a result. Are you aware? It may be negative result or positive result. But there is a result. And the easiest way to take the right path is to search through the word of God. Like the Bible says, it said, your word is a lamp. In other words, it is something that can lead me well, even if it's at night. In darkness, it will lead me. So many people are hungry for God. They want to see God in their life. They want to see a lot of things happen through their life. They want to see a lot of things manifest through their life. There is nothing wrong with that. 
God even desires that we come to that point where we are just thirsty, hungry and thirsty for him because he desires to fill us. But how do we go about this work? Especially when it comes to those who really want to see the manifestation of the anointing in their life. Amen. God so loved many of us. That's why he has not released the anointing for us. Even if we do 100 days dry fast, it will not come. Because God loves us. We have not worked on the pillar that will hold the fire. And we are just interested in the fire. Which is a wrong step. Fire attracts people. But what keeps the people is the pillar you have made over time. Fire attracts people. Breakthrough attracts people. But what keeps that breakthrough coming is the pillars you have made over time. Testimonies attract people. But what keeps more testimonies coming is not to do well today. I keep saying it. Do not be a Christian who is just working for a year. Don't have a one-year mindset as a Christian. For some people, they just have this one-year mindset. Even ministers of the gospel. Or they just, I asked someone yesterday, one of my sons, is about to start a ministry. I asked him, I said, how many years do you desire to run your ministry? He said, sir, a lifetime, sir. I said, a lifetime. I said, now, check the quality of what, what, what you are doing now. Will he carry you for a lifetime? So also it is with Christians that are after the fire. Nothing wrong with pursuing fire. Ask yourself, Oh, catch the fire. How long will it stay? Or how long do I desire for this fire to stay? Oh, you want your eyes to be open today? It can open today. For how long will you continue seeing? Or for how long? Or how much can you ma- manage that fire you are crying for? I asked him, he said, Sir, I really did not think of it this way before. I said, Because you don't know that the things, spiritual things, there are things like marathon race. They are not things you just do 100 meters and sit down, there are things that will last forever. Everything in the kingdom is eternal. Eternal life. That's what we enjoy, right? So when you are desiring a fire, it should be that you are desiring for it to last forever. And because of this, Jesus had to spend 30 years, right? Is it 30 years? 30 years. Just for a ministry of 3 years. 30 years just building the pillars. Because he knew where he was going to. He knew what will happen. He knew when the fire come, many people will come. So he had to sit down and view these pillars where how to handle the people, how to handle his own life. Because it's not just living for the people, you also also live for yourself. Hence, you move out of God's schedules and you end up like Solomon, who was just interested in the people and never his own life. Amen. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. So when you really are pursuing fire, the first thing you must go for is the true knowledge of God's word. About contacting fire or about going about your hunger for God. He said they have zeal. Zeal is not enough. I keep saying this over and over again. You can be zealous. That's why we have people who are fireful. And after two years, they became cultists. They were fired for after two years. They became prostitutes. Why? They were just zealous. Zeal is not enough. Zeal encourages you. Yes. Zeal encourages others. Zeal makes others to be attracted to God. But zeal is not enough. If you focus, if you build on zeal, you are building on sand. I keep talking about two things. Zeal, uh, talking about uh, building on sand and building on the rock, which is the word of God. So when you do not go after the word of God, you will actually build on sand. A man who's used his life or who thinks his maturity is because he's now manifested the gift of the spirit. He's building on sand. A man who thinks because he knows one or two things in the scriptures, therefore he calls himself a mature Christian. He's building on sand. Am I communicating? True beauty must be on the rock, which is Christ. Which is the true word of God. So as you desire knowledge, you must ask for that exact knowledge. It's called epignosis. The exact knowledge of God. So the word of God must be the first way you build your hunger. If, you, if your hunger is not built on the word of God, you will crash. Amen. You will crash. It's not just to wake up and start fasting, start praying. No. No. Let it come from God's word. 
Bible says, and then the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. Because he knew that he was matured enough for this temptation that was coming. He has been beating himself over time. Amen. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Now I want to tell you some pillars that you need to build on before asking for the fire. Or in as much as you are asking for the fire, make sure these pillars are well built. Number one, holiness. Tell your neighbor holiness. People just cry for fire and they don't maintain a holy lifestyle. You cannot even contact the fire without living a holy life. For without holiness, no man can see God. Holiness is the first way to truly hunger and contact the fire of God. When I'm talking about holiness, I'm not talking about you being judgmental when you look at your life and look at another person's life and say, I am better. You are being judgmental. I'm talking about true holiness in and out. Inside you are holy, outside you are holy. Touch not your cleansing. And holiness is not when you just stay away from immorality. You can stay away from immorality, but the content of your heart is wrong. Your motive, your plans, they are very wrong. I have the opportunity to pray for people. And when I pray for you once, there is no answer. I used to ask God, why is it that there is no answer? Why is it that things do not happen? I found out that these people, they are not worth the answer. And God told me one day, he said, stop bothering about people when you pray for them and there is no answer. Don't I answer you at once whenever you pray? I said, yes. So why do you think I don't answer these people? He said, the motives of their hearts, the content of their hearts. Amen. I was talking to Pastor Godwin, uh, was it yesterday or some days ago? I said, some people, if if they are poor, I was also talking to Mr. Kenny on it today. I said, some people, if they are poor, you have to, if the village people are the ones behind their poverty, you have to partner with the village people so that they will never be rich. Because when money enters their hand, you have to call prayer warriors again to pray for them so that they can be humble. Am I communicating? I've seen people in my life and we prayed. After they got one or two breakthroughs, they started acting like boss. And I said, wow, no wonder we'll be praying this prayer point for long. God only wanted me to see why he has been delaying that prayer. Not because he's the, he, he cannot do it for them. Not because he does not want to answer my prayer. But the content of their heart. They may come to church and act like they are so humble so that they can get one or two ways to climb the platform. Uh, the platform. But what is the content of their heart? And they truly want to contest the fire. So holiness cuts across first your lifestyle and secondly, what is the content of your heart? What is the motive behind everything you are doing? A friend of mine, he was telling me about someone. He said, this guy fast and fast and fast. Like fasting is normal to him. The same way you eat food and find it difficult to fast. That's the same way he fast and find it difficult to eat food. And he was wondering, why is this, this guy is not still anointed at this stage? He said, one day they sat down and they were discussing. He said, when he noticed the content of this guy's heart, that all he was just after was fame and some things, he now understood why he has not contacted the fire for so long. So a hunger for God calls for first holiness in and out. The motives of your heart. So many Christians, you can you you will never see them in where they drink. You will never see them where they fornicate. You will never see them where they tell lies. You never see them in many places. But the content of their heart is totally wrong. They still have things that this one God is not going there. Hard hearts. The word of God has not been able to break their hearts, or they've not permitted the word of God to break their hearts. And yet they are crying for fire. Listen, let me tell you something. If you truly have a pure heart or a pure motive, you may not even fast and pray for the anointing and it will come. I was telling a man of God, I said, I have never done one day dry fast in my life. Yet you've seen a lot of miracles around me. He was trying to defend his, the reason why you must do three days dry and all this. I told him, I said, you see it, the motive of your heart. When the motive of your heart is right, every other thing becomes right. Contacting the fire has to do more with the motive of your heart. When some persons asked me, they said, How do you come about the prosperity of the church? And I told them, I said, This is how God used some people. And they went to start the same thing I was doing. They thought he's in doing what you are doing that will bring what I had. Meanwhile, their motives were wrong. 
And when I started mine, I believed you this way. Am I communicating? So, contacting a true fire or a true hunger is the motive of your heart. Amen. I've seen men of God, I've sat down with men of God, and what they are doing is that they'll tell you, I've downloaded the kind of car we buy when I become a minister of God. And you find that this person enters into ministry and is struggling with finances. And he has to lie and go into and do a lot of gymnastics just to get the money. Because why the motive of their heart? So if you are claiming I have hunger for God, walk on holiness. How stable are you? You are standing on one leg and you want to carry a roof on your head. How will you last? Little money comes to your hand. Pride has entered your life. Little revelation. You no longer sit down in church. You look at people like, what are they saying? I am better than this and that. And you want to carry fire on your head. How will you last in the journey? So a true spirit of holiness is the first pillar you must build. Holiness, especially when no one is watching. No man is holy outside. That's not the criteria for majority holiness. Holiness starts from where no one is watching. Am I communicating? That's why the Bible says that it is man that look at the outward appearance. What does God look like? Look at. He checked from the inside out. Why? His spirit is the candle like searching every part of the belly of a man to scan out things that are not consistent with his word. Ah, fire, fire, fire. Breakthrough, breakthrough. You know, a lot of people see breakthrough as one big thing. Breakthrough is not so hard if, you're, if you live a holy life and your heart is pure. That's why for some people, anybody that comes around them, they think that person is a wrong person because they themselves, they have wrong things in their hearts. The Lord give us understanding. Hallelujah. That's the first thing. Number two, fighting your weakness. Another pillar you must build strongly is your weakness. Fight your weaknesses. The average Christian knows these are weaknesses. But he wants to ignore the weakness and claim he's pursuing the fire. And God so loved man. That is why he cannot release the fire. Your weaknesses. I said something. I said sometimes God opened a portal, allow you to walk in it and enjoy it for a period of time so that you can see your weakness. Your weakness will close that portal. Why you pressed and pressed for it so it will open and there your weakness will show. Because one thing about fire is that fire does not hide weakness. That's why you see an anointed man of God, he can still come to stay, use the mic to stone anybody. And you say, ah, with all this anointing, he hears God and not the rest. Why? He has not worked on his weakness. I told you, great men do not fall because of the gifts in their life. They fall because of their weaknesses they did not work on. Samson was so great, but there was a weakness he did not work on. And he was shouting, carrying fire up and down. You notice pride in your life that once you listen to messages, uh, you now come to church like a big man. Nobody talks to you. Nobody. T- you have not worked on it and you are crying for fire. How long will you last? Hallelujah. Wherefore, God resist the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. That's why you look at some people in church and they are not that spiritual as you are. But go close to them and they will share testimonies with you that you'll be amazed. God has brought you there, man of God. Just to obey the pastors is a problem. And you are, and you are crying for fire. Hush, go forward. You are sorted the usher. Little things. Listen, sometimes it's not the big things God looks at. It's the little things. Am I communicating? So people say, I need fire. Let the fire come. Let the fire touch my body. Let the fire do this and that. But to be humble is a problem. They have weaknesses that they've not dealt with. And they parade themselves with these weaknesses like it is it's even good that I have it. Hunger is still there. This one is still there. This one is still there. Untouched, unworked up. They are not even inviting the Holy Ghost to talk about it. What they call, whenever they call the Holy Spirit, whenever they call the Holy Spirit, is to discuss power. And they keep pressing. I see them from one day fast, they go into two days, yet nothing to show. 
Listen, earlier in my life, I discovered that motive matters a lot. And the level of your spiritual stability also matters a lot before God gives you things. So I never bothered for things that I knew that I was not qualified for. Oftentimes when I was growing up as a Christian, of which I'm still growing, I discovered that when I cry for something, God finally gave it to me, and then I misbehave again. And another time, God, I will just smile, and I will tell God, I now I understand why you never wanted to bring it in the first place. As a Christian who is having a close walk with God, there are things you don't tell to God about. It naturally comes. It comes on account of the fact that God sees and knows you can handle them. The Bible said he gave to one ten talents. The man was not the one that said, give me ten talents. I've said it here over and over again. On prophetic days, I don't wake up at night and say, Lord, open my eyes when I come to church. I come to church, the same way I'm talking, when I see things, I tell you. And it is confirmed immediately. What is a normal daily walking? You, you don't pray for it. That Lord, open my eyes, uh, let the message be this and that and that. Am I speaking? So your weaknesses, have you worked on them? Have you undo your weakness? Listen, your prayer points should not be power, but your weakness. Am I communicating? Your prayer point day and night should be, how do I partner with the Holy Spirit to overcome this weakness? Because it is that weakness that will bring you down, no matter the height you get to. Be more greater than uh, Jesus Christ. That weakness will still bring you down. When the devil came to Judas, he looked for his weakness and used it against him. And at the end of it, the money was not able to spend it, and the weakness brought him down to zero points. So even if we pray for greatness, and finally God lifts us, how many people can sustain it? What about your weakness? Will it not bring you down? Some people you are praying for their shop to expand. Lord, expand their shop. Lord, expand their shop. And God is saying, calm down, my son. I know why I have not expanded this shop. She will use her own mouth to insult all the customers and drive them away. You may not be aware of this. And God, that is why God has been restraining work on the weakness. Hallelujah. I've said it before, never stand on the mirror and evaluate yourself. Let people evaluate you. For some of us, when we blow wind and three people fall, we go about writing that we are very anointed. We could be the one saying it. We are very anointed. Man of God once said something. He said, Life of the anointed. He wrote it on Facebook. I laugh. <laughs> I say, if, if people understand what it means to be anointed, they will still go back in their rooms and lock their doors and tarry till they have it. Am I speaking? Yesterday I went somewhere and the, and the guy was like, Say for him who is a man of God. I said, ah, Do you know me? He said, ah, You are a pastor in a good now. I said, ah, you know me? He said, don't worry. Many people know you, but you may not know everybody. Hallelujah. That men may see. I'll give glory to your Father, which is in heaven. So work on your weakness. Your weakness is your first prayer point. God help us in Jesus' name. Number three, the third pillar you must build is to discover your purpose. Not to carry fire. Where are you carrying the fire to? Your fire is supposed to carry you to your purpose. Or to hate your purpose. So when you neglect your purpose, you are pursuing fire, you are pursuing the wrong cause. It's like a lady saying that I want to get married where she has no idea of her purpose in life. And so it goes to the husband's house and don't know if he's to become a housewife or to look for a teaching job or to do this and do that. And the other of it, the woman just looked at him and said, Ah, you, you are just eating, eating, eating. Hallelujah. That's why some people are, they just carry fire. Yeah. Let's gather, let's gather. What, where are you gathering to? What is your purpose and what's the relevance of your fire towards the purpose? You must sit down, search out your purpose. So that as you are pursuing the fire, when the fire comes, it will lead you straight to your purpose without challenges. When you walk on your, you will look for your, your purpose. And in achieving your purpose, you may try many things. That's the truth about purpose. Today you may think he's here. Tomorrow you think he's here. But at the end of it, it will surely speak. If you search for it with the whole of your heart. Amen. Then the next pillar you must build is to discern his voice. 
People go about saying I'm a strong Christian. Ah, if not that I'm a mature Christian. You are a mature Christian and still do not hear God's voice. You are not matured. Strong means they are for manual of age. The voice of God, they are for manual of age. If you cannot discern God's voice on an issue, you have to sit down, carry, hide yourself. So you can discern God's voice. These things I have just listed. If you are truly a Christian who desires the fire and the fire to carry you for life, and you are truly hungry for God, and you start working on these things, you will hide yourself. They will give you a mic and you will be afraid of taking the mic. Because you feel like, ah, I've worked on many things. Am I speaking? To this end, that was why Jesus said, Tarry, hide yourself. Stay. Stay to acquire the right knowledge of God. Stay to be holy. Stay to maintain balance in your spiritual world before you go about shouting, anointing, and all these things. Hide. Tarry yourself. Hide yourself. Work on these things. Work on these things. You know, a lot of people come to ministries like this and to ask questions is a problem. They feel in the man of God. Well, what does he have to tell me? I, I study my Bible at home. I listen to great men of God. The basics that God has sent them here to take, they will not take it. They are looking for the roof. And for years, check those people's life. They keep looking for the roof. That is why a person can come here, for example, because his heart is down. And his heart is ready to really follow the vision and everything we are doing here. In two, three months, he starts working in the anointing. And someone that has been here for years has learned all the English or everything we have learned. Why his heart is not here? His heart is divided. Amen. The Lord help us. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> so, so many people, their heart is not here. They claim they are here, but their heart is not here. And they want to contact the anointing. Why they claim their heart is here, why their minds are somewhere far away, just like some people are looking at the drum set now. While well, we are talking about the message, <laughs> that's how distracted they are. So they say, Ah, men of God, like Bishop or Yedipo, they've not obeyed the ones they teach them here, they want to obey the one Yedipo is teaching there. <laughs> Lovers of themselves, more than lovers of God. It's not nice words that change people. It's the one you obey that change you. You can receive 300 rema for life. The one you do obey is the one that will change your life. Am I speaking? Every day you write, when you get to what do you do with it? Uh, you dust it. My God, I was in the service. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now can I listen to Bishop Ediko and add to it? You are compiling notes. Notes don't change people. Obedience is what changes people. You have three thick exercise book. Yes, voice of God, you don't hear. Amen. When they say, let's teach you, say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. That is why some people, you are just quoting. You are, you are not different from it, a teacher that graduated from education. Because a teacher that graduated from education read from one book and taught the people the same thing. What we are giving you here is an appetizer. Follow and I will make you. God is a God of order. If you claim you are smart, you may never be anointed. When God brings you other ministry like this, you ignore the men of God, you ignore the anointed presence, you ignore everything and feel like, ah, I can walk on my own. You see some people like that. <laughs> some people say, some people are so funny. They say, no need to go to church. Check those people. They vaccinated long ago. No need to go to church. You can serve God from your room. See, today they don't know God. Because they, they, they boycott protocols and in their hearts they think they can go about things the other way around. The fact that uh, nobody can control me, nobody can talk to me, no need for me to submit myself under someone. And they went about things their own way. And see, today they have not found God. They said they, you can find him in your room. And yes, some people say it's not the same God your pastor is praying to that you pray to. Why not need that in your room and pray? They feel like if you disregard authority, that the same answer will come. That's not true. God is a God of order. When you disregard authority, even if you are doing the right thing, it will not come to pass. Why? You have boycott an authority and felt like it's not relevant. Someone God has placed there. You felt it's not relevant and you are doing your own. 
a house divided against itself shall not what? Shall not stand. Amen. So I said you must build the pillar of what? Of discerning the voice of God. And all these things, I think we should end here tonight. All these things aim at you becoming stable. Stability is the reason why God wants you to work on all these things. Before things are put in a house, they make sure that the house is stable, right? So before you are calling for fire, are you stable? Before you are calling for fire, are you stable? Can you stay two weeks without sin? Can you stay two weeks without falling into the same error over and over again? When you have maintained this life of balance, God, God can put anything on top of you. Because much has been given to you and much is expected. Amen. Your balance. Have you worked on your balance? So when you understand this, this you will run, you will hide. You will hide yourself. You will hide yourself. And the only platform you have is when possibly when you go out for evangelism. For some of us now, if they give you opportunity, you want to lay hands on people. And I laugh. A man of God once followed me to a program. I was laying hands, conducting deliverance. He joined me. He had not gained stability. He joined me. I said, all right, let's keep laying hands. He laid hands. There was manifestation. Power. At the end of it, after some, after the program, after one week, he said, ah, man of God, I'll not be able to pray. I said, it's normal. <laughs> well, he taught laying of hands. Listen, when you go into deliverance, I want to give you a key tonight. When you go into deliverance, cast out the first demon, cast out the second demon. If you are not careful, you fall into immorality. Because when you cast out a demon, that demon will not chase the person again. It will come after you that remove him. It will now partner with the demon of the territory that will be wanting to pull you down. Plus your village demons. You multiply the demons. And your spiritual life is not stable yet. You are going to cast out demons. I'm speaking. <laughs> Jesus, we know. Paul, we know. Who are you? The source of scripture had no stability, but they wanted to cast them on. You know, so people just sit down at the front or at the back and they look at the person in ministry and say, ah, It's not doing it the right way. Let me do it. They will give you mic. You will do it the right way. The, after that program at night, you may be surprised. You preach so well, but we applaud you. After one week, no revelation is coming again. Because you have not gained balance and you are building. A friend of mine told me about a guy who just nearly contacted the fire. He just nearly gave his life to Christ and went to his village to uproot idol. People that have been Christianity for 30 years are still afraid of idols. <laughs> the guy heard that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. <laughs> and he shall, that's a rema. He ran. Without waiting, <laughs> it, it was built on sand, <laughs> and so he ran and removed the idol. The idol did not say anything to him; they did not disturb him. It was when he went to collect his certificates <laughs> that the trailer had a collision with him. Amen. So, do not run emotionally. Zeal is not enough. Zeal is not enough. You must gain stability. A man said, if I'm giving seven days to cut that in three, I will spend the first six days sharpening my ass. In other words, I will spend the first six days gaining stability. Hallelujah. I'll be gaining stability. When I am stable, all things can stand on me. Anything can stand upon a foundation that is well built. Hallelujah. When your foundation is not well built, if you like, receive the greatest anointing that no man on earth has ever received. Receive a prophecy that you'll be richer than all your family members. You will still come back to their level. Because why? Your foundation is affected. And if the foundation be destroyed with the righteous, there's nothing they can do. Am I communicating? So gain stability in the spirit before carrying load inside. Before you are carrying pride. When you have not even gained stability, you will fall. 
know there are some people they feel like I've got you something, I've got you something. Ah, I caught something. There are things I know now that Pastor God has no idea of. There are things I know. And just one little thing comes and push them off the lane and everything wipes. Hallelujah. Understand that the journey of your life is not one year. I keep saying it. Don't run the, your life like you are going to stay for one year. This journey is forever. And you are just preparing for 10 minutes and you are already proud. For a lifetime journey, a journey we tend to run for life, what have you got? I said, eat again. Sit down, get stability again. Why this journey is just too far. Elijah ate and felt, ah, this one can carry me. You know, some of us are like that. But because of some revelations and some things we have caught, and we cannot pray for one hour and say, ah, this one can carry me. And the angel said, Elijah, you have no understanding of spiritual things. Eat again. Because this journey is too far. Your journey does not end the universe. Are you aware? Your journey go as far as your husband's house. If you think you have prayed and now you have freedom, you are going to pray for your husband. Amen. A lady once said, uh, she said she asked someone, how does it look like to marry a pastor? <laughs> Some of you, how many of us know that it's difficult? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. It's difficult, right? Eh? Why? There will be fasting. There will be prayers. Take no wait. As a normal Christian, are you not going to pray? Are you not going to fast? Are you not going to pray for your husband? So what's not hard? Because why? You are not doing those things now. You have not gained stability on those things. And so when you say, uh, you see a pastor, you say, ah, Pastor God, go, uh, oh Lord, show me another vision. <laughs> the Lord give us understanding. Rise up, let's pray for stability. It's not to fall under the anointing. You'll be falling every day. The few chairs you have, you will break 20 from inside. <laughs> not till we come upon you. I'm telling you the truth. No man of God will tell you this. They will have that allow you to fall all the time. They will blow wind, you will fall. You will not gain anything. Gain stability first. Work on your stability. Open your mouth and say, Father, give me grace to be stable. I want to be stable in this journey. How many of us here have you, like throughout this week, you have been studying the Bible without breaking it? Uh, you have not gained stability here. Call you, come and take up me prayer. You'll be happy. Uh, you rush. You are dying. Instead of you to just quietly tell the man of God that, ah, sir, yesterday is not balanced with today. Uh, maybe tomorrow, sir. You want to act like that's what we call fake capacity operation. You are dying, but you are acting like you are strong. It's called fake capacity operation. What did I say? You are dying, but you are claiming that ah, I'm not dying. I'm not dying. Amen. Just like some of us after exam, the exam was difficult. Was half hour was there? Ah, it was so sweet. Fake capacity. Open your mouth and say, Father, help me to gain stability in the spirit. I want to be stable. I want to be stable in and out. I want to be strong. I want to be strong. I want to be strong. A strong Christian is a Christian who has a good relationship with God, even in the secrets and in the hope. Open your mouth and pray. Father, help me to be strong in my prayer life. To be consistent with prayers. To be consistent in the place of study. To be consistent in my prayer, study, fasting life. Every area of my life, I want to be stable. I want to be stable. They shall be like tree planted by the, wind, uh, by the waters. They shall not run dry because they are stable. They are stable. They are stable. They are stable. Fasting becomes normal. You are no longer dragging with it. Praying in the morning becomes normal. You are no longer dragging with it. Staying in holy life becomes normal. Because you are no longer, you have this stability. Lord, help me to be stable. Help me to be stable. Reuben, you are unstable of water. Because of this, you will not succeed. A double standard, an unstable man cannot receive. An unstable man cannot gain 
things in the spirit. An unstable man cannot get the voice of God. An unstable man cannot gain mastery in the spirit. An unstable man cannot discern the times and seasons. But the children of Issachar, they had an understanding. They had an understanding. Have you gained that understanding? Have you gained that exposition? Have you gained that mastery? Have you gained mastery? Have you gained mastery? Have you got that character? The journey is far. You may go up with fire, but character can bring you down. That I may gain mastery in the spirit. Stability in the spirit. Stability in the spirit. Stability in the spirit. Irede subra. Rekele kato shana mande krada bola badosi. Rekede bala badosa gada. Erade gede kotomba kata. Rete gede kanosia. Ekrento sumaranta. Ekresusa barande zuse. Irede zolo bolo bolo saya. Ekrende zusa. Rekete gede gonsa. In the bala. In Jesus name we pray. One of the ways to gain stability tonight, hear this. One of the ways to gain stability is to be committed. What did I say? Commitment is the key. If you have made up your mind, uh, hallelujah. When you've made up your mind to be committed to a task, it's no longer whether you want to do it. Commitment is different from just mere desire. Am I speaking? Commitment. Hallelujah. There are times you feel like not choirs. There are times you feel like not coming to church, right? But you are already committed. Whether you like it or not, you still come. Whether you are frowning, you are hungry, you will still come. You have made the commitment. That's why. So also, when you get to that point of commitment, whether you feel like study the word of God or not, you just say, I must study. Whether you feel like praying or not, you say, I must pray. Necessity is laid upon me. That's what is called commitment. And you know that it is either I do it or I do it. It has been laid on me. It is expected of me. It is expedient. Open your mouth and pray. That power, that power to be committed to my task. I will be committed. I will be committed to prayer. Whether I wake up, I feel like praying or not, I will pray. Whether I wake up, I feel like fasting or not, I will fast. Necessity is laid upon me. There is an expectation from heaven. There is an expectation expectation from heaven there is an expectation from heaven rekete kete baka to balata yegete kete susa praha rekedi balamando sia rekete keleto let me to come to that point of commitment let me to come to that point of commitment fun Commitments. Commitments, commitments, commitments. We don't have time, we spend a lot of time. I want to be committed. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I want to pray every night. Lord, help me. Make it this Yana Kosh Canada. Retos Kabahashkana. Make it get the Kotototos. Rizaladan Shishi Koba. Rezezezeze. Ikene Ketesusi. Zikete. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Where you invest most is where you control most. Am I speaking? Where you invest most is where you control most. If you invest in prayers, you will control your day. If the things around you are the ones controlling you, you have not invested in prayers. When you invest in the word of God, you will start controlling. This will not be controlling you. The thing is that you have not invested. You must invest in prayers. You must invest in the study of the word. You must invest in fasting. Your investment. Have you ever seen an investor that is poor? Huh? 
someone that invested in houses, lands, and is now poor. Have you seen? It's only those that did not invest, but yet they are expecting commitment. It is my commitment for life that there is no going back. Pray. Commitments. The last prayer. I want to invest in prayer. I want to invest in prayer. It's not for you to fall under the anointing. What are you working on? 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray for staying power. In the name of Jesus. You shall pursue God the right way. In the mighty name of Jesus. I know many preachers will not tell you all these things. They will just tell you be hungry for God. Do this, do this for God. No. There is a pattern. There is a way you must start from. Build your life well. This is why you see anointed people with pride. Anointed people that just little thing will happen in their meeting. Please leave them. This is why you see an anointed person with pride. Anointed people with little things happening in their meeting and they are making noise both on Facebook and everywhere. It's because they did not gain stability. A man who knows that he, uh, healing the sick person is not anything in the kingdom. We press for greater heights. You pray for people and they are healed, and you are not you are you are not keeping yourself hiding yourself for that. Then you have stopped reading the Bible. Because if you read the Bible, you know how many persons that follow Jesus. I told someone, I said, Pastor Cephas is not yet anointed until the whole echoes of the gathers in this place to hear the voice of God. People are not busy. They've not seen the anointing. A full city came out to see Jesus. No publicity, no TV, nothing, nothing. Those are the ones that can say I'm anointed. Not just little things happening and we are bragging. If you think you have voice, maybe you have stopped listening to those that have voice. Amen. You have not gained stability. Open your mouth and pray for that stability one more time. Take an offering your hand and the supreme. tonight. Your enemy is not God. God wants to give you everything, but you have a problem you must deal with, which is your flesh. Tell your neighbor your flesh. The flesh profits nothing. You want to sleep when others are sleeping, and you want to gain power. You want to be eating when others are eating, and you want to gain power. And you are claiming your own for God. You want to live in sin.